All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today's episode is a little bit of a repeat, but with a twist. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years ago, we got to drive and review one of our very favorite crossovers, the 2021 Kia Seltos, um, and a very nicely equipped Seltos, right, yep. Casey? SX with the all-wheel drive loaded out. With the turbocharged engine. Turbo. Yep. Yeah, which is an upgrade. And sitting behind us, we have something very similar uh, and I'm gonna flip the camera around and let Casey introduce the newest uh, car. So we've got the 2022, this is the Nightfall edition of the Seltos, uh, which is kind of an appearance package with EX trim, let's say. We've still got the turbo, we've still got all wheel drive, uh, but like you said, it's mostly an appearance package, uh, which is the matte wheels, kind of satin, uh, there's some other stuff going on. A lot of it's at the front of the car with the grill and everything. But Those are nice. You know, usually you get that real glossy finish on black wheels. That's a little bit of a different look. It is different and it is superior. I'm not a fan of the, the super gloss black on the wheels, depending on what other color it goes with. But um, speaking of color, this is one of my favorite colors to get any car in. Uh, this is just any car looks good in this kind of shade of blue. But you know, you said you didn't really like the appearance of this one, uh, which surprised me a little bit. But the more I looked at it, I started to come around. You've got the Nightfall package, right? Which we like on all the Kia models. You've got one of my favorite shades of blue. We've got a white roof, all things that I like, but somehow together, the appearance is somehow less than the sum of its parts. Yeah, and I've had this car most of the week, so I've been walking up to it and away from it uh, off and on, and I finally kind of figured it out. I I'm with you. I love, you know, the midnight, uh, nightfall look. I love blue cars. This one's a little busy. Once you put together the blue, the white roof, the black up on the rails, some of the really unique sort of features, uh, you know, baked into the rails, baked into the rear spoiler, this little piece down here. Once you put all that together, it just looks really busy. It kind of overwhelms the overall design. And we had that SX Turbo. Yep. And it came in the launch yellow. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the exact, uh, I think it was Sunburst or Sunburst Sunlight. yellow or something. And you said in that review that Kia is sending it out in this launch color. This is what they're using for all the promotion. And you guys are all going to go buy it in blue or white <laughs> yeah. or whatever. And not to do that. And it turns out you're right. I think that color really did highlight all the best design elements of the car, the way the roof line and the belt line trim and everything all flows together. It turned out really good in that color. Um, this doesn't working. look terrible. It doesn't look terrible. I'll tell you one thing that you had in that SX trim was that kind of cantilevered end to the roof rails, oh, which wow. we thought was a cool design element. And it's yeah. totally gone here. And I don't it's really understand here. why. I did. I love that little part. It's just sporty enough. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they were looking for something with a little bit more of a, I don't know, off-road type look to it. That was more sporty. Well, it does have that. And So, hey, yeah. run back up here to the front because there are some real differences here. And I think this is going to be a running theme of this review is we are looking at an appearance package. For all intents and purposes, this is an EX, okay, but with an mm. appearance package to it. So really unique. It sits between the EX, the SX, yep. okay? So you get a lot of the EX content, but with a unique look. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna talk about is, is some of the things that are missing, okay? So we'll do that right here at the front. But one thing we do get on this trim package that's unique. Yeah, is this Nightfall grill, which we do really love. Yep. It looks really good. Uh, but then little things start to fall short. You know, you're missing the LED headlamps, which you don't notice looks wise. Uh, most people aren't gonna be able to pick that out just driving by the car. But you are missing those LED fogs, which you will notice because you get a lot more just kind of plastic cladding in that fog light well. Um, and it is worth pointing out because, you know, in that previous review and in the current car, those LEDs though, they really had a really nice pattern to mm -hmm. them and a nice finish. So again, just one of those little things uh, that you are missing that I, you know, maybe some car nerds like us kind of value. That's but, right. But overall still look, I mean, I love that grill. It is unique to the trim. Yeah. It looks good. 
And we have to say, we've referenced that previous review. We'll link to it in the description. We love this car. We love the way it Absolutely. drives. Uh, we like the handling of it, the kind of the way the suspension feels, the powertrain, all of that. It's a nice little package. We like where it sits in the market. So go watch that one. We also do a lot of stuff, you know, car seat tests and a little bit more luggage capacity and things like that. We're not gonna focus on all that stuff again, just cause we've already done it. We've done it and look, it's still fun to drive. It is fun to drive. Got a sure. great uh, turbocharged engine, 175 horsepower, the dual clutch automatic, uh, really shifts quick. It does, it's a great powertrain. Plenty of room back here. Plenty of room. This is, you know, standard in class for this. Um, Just for this you know, segment. This segment. One thing we nice are missing SUV. that did drive me a little crazy this week, there's no place to really hang stuff. Okay, you've got yeah. a couple little hooks over here on the side. But when I had a bunch of bags and a bunch of things back here, there wasn't really a lot of place to secure those. Yeah. Just a little thing, but uh, little things. You know, those things come in handy. You know, you have to reach up here to release the seats. There's no like release button that's kind of easier to reach. Um, again, normal for the segment. Uh, those things often just aren't even available. Things like power lift gate is nowhere to be found and I don't think available anywhere in the Seltos lineup. Oh my goodness. I know. Oh, that was just very strenuous. Oh man. Let's yeah. take a look at the back seats. Yeah. Let's open it up back. Yep. So right away you'll notice no leather, something else quote unquote missing from this car. Uh, you only get one charging port in the back. You don't get those nice convenient charging ports in the side of the front seats. Not there. Not there. Again, you know, this is more of the economical side of the price spectrum. Uh, Kia does tend to deliver good value, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that mm -hmm. towards the end. So this is their cloth seat, and I'll talk a little bit more when we yeah. jump in the car about what that's like. You get a little bit of blue stitching in places, which is kind of part of the nightfall package. Yeah, it's almost like a purple. Uh -huh. It's not quite blue. It's yeah, it's got this really unique hue to it. And that actually gets repeated up front on the dash. Why don't you take this and I'm going to hop in the driver's seat. Okay. And I really like the look of these cloth seats. How do they feel to you? Well, uh, this is a huge sticking point for me with this car, especially when we start to compare it to the uh, SX that we had before. So I need lumbar mm. and come a little bit this way. I, I need a little bit more support on the back and I don't have it in this car. Uh, and then the other thing with this seat is it's really hot. So a lot of times like cloth seats aren't so hot, especially like in the summer. But man, I was sweating all week up and down my back and, ba and you know, the back of my legs. For whatever reason, this cloth seat is not as breathable as some of the others that I've experienced. Yeah, and I didn't spend that much time in it, but I'll say the adjustment on this cloth seat left a lot to be desired too. No power seats in this one, uh, which is something that's totally fine with me as long as I get a good manual seat. And this one really kind of isn't. Right. No, that's uh, that's absolutely true. And, you know, the the rest of the interior, again, uh, starting to feel a little bit dated when you compare it to the rest of the Kia lineup. So you do have the 10 inch screen, um, but in this car, you've only got a three inch digital cluster in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's an upgraded option. There's a seven inch once you move up one more trim package, uh, which is really nice. Uh, just a couple of other things to think about. So things like windows. So in this trim, I've got automatic one touchdown windows, okay? But not one touch up. I actually have to hold on to it. Uh, again, you know, these are little things, but sort of a theme. It's also not a one touch on the passenger side, only for the guy driving. Right. Uh, one of the themes that I noticed with this car based on our prior experience, was it kept reminding me of the things that it didn't have. And uh, right away, if you look at the steering wheel, you'll notice a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this little button right here, which is the um, 
lane uh, steering assist button, okay? So not only will it keep you centered in your lane, but it will actually, when you're going down the highway, will actively steer with curves that are coming up. Um, but this is cruise control, but it's not dynamic cruise. Yeah. And that's a big problem for me because you've got active steering, but if you're not able to dynamically follow the car in front of you, then you're not all the way there. And Kia has this great highway driving assist uh, program and uh, dynamic cruise and dynamic steering. It all works together to have a really, really nice experience when you're on road trips. And again, that's just a little omission uh, here on this vehicle. And it's a notable one too, because I get the feeling that uh, radar cruise is something that's going to be mandated soon. You know, along the yeah. lines of cameras and, and uh, pressure monitoring sensors. I just feel like it's so ubiquitous now that you're going to start to see it mandated. Ubiquitous. Big words. Big yeah, words. Big words. Um, so we do have our USB plugs down here, one for charging, one for connecting Android Auto and CarPlay. We don't have wireless Android Auto and CarPlay on this car. And I think that's just because it's you know about two years old, the technology slowly coming in mm -hmm. to some of the other things, uh, some of the newer models. Uh, we don't have wireless charging, so that's missing. Another thing that is missing from something you get like on the SX is you don't have an auto dimming, auto -dimming. mirror. Uh, I think you can technically add one with Homelink as an extra uh, feature, but uh, again, just one of those little one of those little things that yeah. uh, we noticed throughout the week that just kind of reminded us, hey, this is not previously. So it is. But, you know, I have to say, I have been the target buyer for this kind of car in the past, right? This is more of a mid twenties, early thirties kind of car. And I almost kind of want to applaud them for even offering a trim package like this, where you can get the exciting powertrain, but don't have to buy all the extras. I didn't want leather when I was 25. I didn't care about that. I like turbos. I like all wheel drive, cruise control, sure, nav, okay, maybe. But all that other stuff you're talking about wouldn't really factor in for me. So I would would be annoyed that manufacturers wouldn't offer me the option to buy a little turbo fun without all that extra stuff. Okay, I understand that, but I came prepared for that conversation. Okay. okay? Because I'm gonna run this down. I brought, I brought a list. Oh, he's I've, got a list. I've got a list. And I'm gonna run down the differences between this vehicle mm -hmm. and the Nightfall Edition and the top of the line SX. All right. Okay. Okay. So here's what you get when you go up to the SX. You get wireless charging. Sure. Get an upgraded stereo. Go from six speakers to eight speakers, and I do believe it's Bose branded. You get a seven inch digital gauge cluster. That 10 way power seat with lumbar that we were talking about. Okay. We get rid of the cloth, so we go to a full Syntex. It's not full leather, it's an artificial leather, but we get full Syntex seats front and rear. Get your auto up and down on the, uh, the windows auto dimming mirror you get a cargo cover in the back Ooh. okay which okay. hey you know yeah. nice little thing to have sure we do get map pockets in the back of these seats mm -hmm. all right so that's some of the interior stuff then let's talk about what you get from a safety perspective and uh, an autonomous driving you get your smart cruise control hey the big omission here you get highway driving assist which we have loved in every kia that we've driven that had it it's seamless it's unbelievable you get cyclist detection. So on this trim, you get pedestrian detection with your safety systems, but it also upgrades to cyclist detection. I don't really know what that means, but okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that you also get when you go up to the SX is you get safe exit, which is a really nice feature that when you open the door, if a car is approaching or a bicyclist and you start to open it, it will beep at you and alert you that something's oh, coming. Yes. Okay, so that's a really nice feature. <laughs> Especially if you got kids riding back there. Who yep. Don't then, pay attention. Right, exactly. Okay, we already hit on the fact that you get LED headlights and LED fogs on the SX outside of the car. Again, nice, bright, clear light at night, and it just looks good. Okay. How much do you think all of that, what do you think the price difference is between this edition and a fully loaded all-wheel drive SX? Yeah, all that stuff, that's $4,500 worth of options. Incorrect. You want to know how much it is? $1,300, $1,300 to go okay. from this to the uh, fully loaded. What are we even doing here? I know, that, and that's kind of my point with this model 
is that, hey, it looks kind of cool, it looks different, it's a little busy in this color, but we get it. Um, but for $1,300, to get all the things that, frankly, all week have kind of driven me a little bit nutty right. and reminded me of what I don't have, I think that's a no-brainer. I just, I would skip this all together, I would go straight to the SX Turbo, and I would just enjoy the, a, a fabulous driving car. Yes, I retract my previous statement. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, I would not have this trim. Not at all. All right, guys. Well, look, hey, that's our quick walk around. Again, if you want to see the driving dynamics and, you know, uh, see what that's all about, we'll post the link to the old video. And uh, hope you enjoyed this really quick overview of the Kia Nightfall Edition. the hell was that? Sorry. There's oh. some kind of chupacabra next door. It's a human being. <laughs> oh, 